aus fellow South Africans bereit zu Dumelan. Er rippelt die Gesellschaft pele, kerumelle Matsidi so hole Kokola African National Congress lele la Palawan ngobo, kahola chere lo kimen ngobo, kararu ba le kakhoto. On Friday night, we all stood up to applaud the president after his State of the Nation address. And I'll be honest with you, it felt good. It felt good to be a member of this august house with its dignity restored. It felt good to be a member of the opposition, knowing that, in fact, our efforts in the last decades have not been in vain. <laughs> Most of all, it felt good to be a South African. This is Kenya. It felt good to be a citizen of this beautiful country, exciting country with all of its challenges, with all of the hope in the face of adversity. I can recall when I looked up at the gallery and I saw former President Mbeki, I was reminded of his timeless words when we signed our constitution into law. We are all Africans, every single one of us. And when I saw former Deputy President F.W. de Klerk, I recalled the spirit of reconciliation that still runs deep in our veins as we celebrate Madiba's 100th year. <laughs> Nelson Mandela's generosity of spirit and his extraordinary leadership when faced with tough choices inspired so many of us to take up the fight for a free, fair, and a prosperous society. We may sit on different sides of this house, but I hope that all of us here are here because we want to build a South Africa we can hand over to our children. Fellow South Africans, we are presented with a unique window of opportunity. We have removed a corrupt, broken president from office. Our task now is to fix the broken country he has left behind. <laughs> President Ramaphosa has promised the people of South Africa a new dawn. I really believe that this is what he wants for South Africa. It is certainly what we want for South Africa. And I want to pledge my support and the support of our party towards the realization of this goal. On Smut Almal Samver. Fellow South Africans, we live in a democracy. And a democracy is a contestation of ideas to build a better society. Democracies carry with it the explicit acknowledgement that humans do make mistakes, that we are fall fallible, and that in fact nobody has a monopoly on truth. Democracy is not a war. It is not a fight for the, to the death between people who look different or think different. We are not enemies. We are opponents. When we differ, we must say so, and we must be robust in our disagreements if necessary. The time, fellow South Africans, has come to fix South Africa together. President Ramaphosa faces a difficult task and he will need all of our help. We need to do everything we can to make sure that this new dawn is not a false dawn. Our president has in inherited a broken education system in which, in fact, militant union interests are placed before the interests of our children. He has inherited an economy where millions of young people cannot find work and have given up looking for work. He has inherited a corrupt state that has been captured to serve the interests of a few at the expense of the many. And he has inherited a governing party that is deeply divided, severely limiting his room to maneuver. We understand these constraints. constraints. And we understand why he was unable to present a meaningful agenda for reform on Friday night. Summits, workshops, and conferences 
may be enough to buy the president some time, but they certainly won't be enough to fix South Africa. To fix what is broken, we need to move from talk to action as quickly as possible. We need to move beyond the policy paralysis that has held our nation hostage. We need our president to make the tough choices that can put us back on the right path. Fellow South Africans, this begins with education. We have to acknowledge that our education system is, in fact, in crisis. It is not possible to read, quite painfully so, that in fact, in the latest global tests, four out of five of our boys and girls cannot read with meaning by the end of grade three. Bahaitsu, Haratswana and Nelebanaba school of Abato Diranjalo. The message is loud and clear. We have failed to set our children up for a future that they deserve. We can talk about the fourth industrial revolution. We must prepare them for the revolution that is going on now, fellow South Africans. Learners in our poorest schools cannot compete with our peers in their richer schools. And this, Mr. President, is in fact reinforcing inequality. There is no single reason for the failure of our education system. We must acknowledge the role of SATU in it. Minister Mucheha's ministerial task team found that six out of the nine provincial education departments have been captured by SATU bosses, and that education is failing in those provinces because of SATU's toxic influence. And so, Mr. President, your first choice is to end state capture by SATU, the same powerful and militant union that helped you rise to the presidency of the ANC. Honorable members, when our students leave school, they need to find work. But half of our young people under the age of 35 are still unemployed. So we support the president's call for more internship and apprenticeships. On the job training is more powerful means to upskill our young people and prepare them for the world of work. But the fact remains, we have to create meaningful work for them to do. And this means that we have to grow our economy at the rate required to absorb young people into the labor market. We need to start, I'm going to help you. We need to start by making it easier for young people to access jobs by confronting nepotism, bribery, and corruption that stands in their way. I believe, honorable member, that if we give young people a year of civilian service in the public sector, in sectors like education, healthcare, and policing, we could help thousands of school leavers have crucial work experience and possibly kickstart their careers. But we equally, honorable members, need to be careful to monitor the impact of the national minimum wage on the employment prospects of young people. We need to make sure that young job seekers are not left behind. We need to consider wide exemptions for small businesses from minimum wage ex exemption and also exempting young entrants into the labor market, eh, Mr. President. Speaker. The president recommitted the government to the national health insurance in his address. Now we share the global affordable goal for quality health care for all. But the question is whether we can afford to double health care expenditure at a time when our budget deficit has ballooned to 4.3% of GDP. Sometimes, Jack and Dr. Nelson Mandela showed us the toughest choices of all is to abandon something you have invested a lot of time and effort in. The truth is that NHI undermines our excellent world-class healthcare sector. It will cause an exodus of South Africa's brilliant nurses and doctors who are in high demand all over the world. And it is, honorable members, whether we like it or not, entirely unaffordable 
even for nations that are far wealthier than ours. Mr. President, we cannot confront healthcare without confronting the deep pain and sorrow of the Esitimeni tragedy. <laughs> Mr. President, I am an uncle of a disabled niece. She lives in Gauteng, and it would have been very possible for her to have ended up in one of the NGOs. All I can say sitting here today is that thank God she didn't. I really believe when Minister Aaron Mutualedi described what took place there, he described it as a crime reminiscent of apartheid. Mr. President, I hope, and you will have my absolute support, that those who are responsible for the tragedy of killing our people in life is it many, both the officials and the politicians that were involved will be held to account in the ultimate level possible. There are many reasons why it happened, but we also know that public sector salaries that reward, that reward accountability and delivering good services. At this point in time, 587 billion rands this year the public sector wage are more than half of our entire budget and are way above other emerging economies. This, honorable members, is not sustainable. The president has to resist the pressure from the public sector, from the public sector unions and curb this wage bill. Honorable members, I also welcome the president's commitment to reduce the size of his cabinet. At 35 ministries, each with a deputy ministers, ours is one of the most bloated governments in the world. We, in fact, have already done work in this, and I believe, Mr. Uh, President, it is possible to run an executive with 15 ministries with spending priorities that promote economic growth and job creation. If we have your cabinet, we can save 4.7 billion rands. Now, I know this is hard because the president has to dish out patronage to many people. But Mr. President, let me perhaps ask you by start removing ministers who have already shown themselves to be compromised. Show South Africa that you're really serious about fighting corruption in your party and fire Batabile Zamini, Faith Mutambi, Museven Zizwane, Melusi Kikaba, Des Van Royen, David Maslobo, Lynn Brown, and Mr. 7,000 rents per night, Bongani Bongo, out of your cabinet. <laughs> Mr. President, if you want to undo the damage of state capture, then we must acknowledge those who've led us there in the first place. It will be easy to write off the crisis of evil work to one man in cohoots with foreign benefactors, but the truth is much more difficult. State capture would have, would have not have happened had it not been for the support of the policy of the ANC of cater deployment of sending people to state-owned enterprises. It is these deployed cadres who hollowed out our state-owned enterprises to enrich a few individuals closer to them. It was cater deployment to the commanding heights of the criminal justice system, the NPA, the Hawks, the SARS, who all looked the other way when state capture was taken. It was this corrupt system was not the work of one man, nor is it that the removal of one man will now suddenly destroy it. If you want to destroy it, Mr. President, you have to end the ANC's policy of cadre deployment. That means, in fact, confronting the perpetrators of this corrupt system that still sit in this house, some who still occupy senior offices at Lutuli House, and some who are in fact involved in now, what is now come to know, the Freire the Dam farm theft. It will also mean removing from offices those cadres deployed who serve the interest of this corrupt system. And I would begin with the current public protector, Busisiwa Mkwebane, and also the head of the NPA, Sean Abrams. <laughs> Honorable members, it is deeply encouraging to hear that in fact the president cast doubt on the nuclear deal at the recent World Economic Forum. 
And I was hoping that on Friday night at the State of the Nation address, the president would have closed the matter once and for all. It is critical that, in fact, we make our position on the future of nuclear deals very clear. Honorable members, we cannot afford this 1.2 trillion rands junket. It is, in fact, it will seem very obvious, but it's another tough choice, Mr. President. Too many people have a vested interest in securing a nuclear deal. And so the pressure will be on to forge ahead. Be strong, Dr. Ramaphos. Reject this nuclear deal and put your weight behind the neglected renewable projects so that we can move forward into an era of clean, affordable energy. <laughs> Mr. President, you are one of the few people who can claim proud co-authorship of our Constitution. All of us in this House pledge our allegiance to it, and we owe our eternal protection to it. On Friday, you reaffirmed the soaring words of the opening pages that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, black and white. Bold leadership requires that you resist the pressures in your own party to undo the rights enshrined in our Constitution, including property rights. The same property rights underpin the entire economy, as you will know from, our own, from your own successful business career. The dispossession of the 1913 Land Act, the dispossession of land through the 1913 Native Land Act was apartheid's original sin. Its consequences are still felt in our society today. And make no mistake, it must be addressed. We can correct this injustice in a way that respects the rule of law in which the rights of current and future landowners are protected. We can speed up land reform by rooting out corruption and inefficiency. And we must, fellow South Africans, trust emerging black farmers with real land ownership, not just the permanent tenants of the state. Let those who work the land own the land. Mepuso, Yarona Humpieno, Epalet Gomufa, Le Fatelaha. Botata Bahare has a constitution. Botata Bahare go repuso Yahare, Epalet Gomufa, Le Fatelaha, Kanago, and it's one is a mufelo. Therefore, we can, fellow South Africans, we need a capable government and a political will to hand over land, not an amendment to the constitution. We can have a thriving, growing, and a diverse agricultural sector whose wonderful produce fill the shelves all over the world. But we absolutely cannot afford this if farmers do not know what their land will be taken from them without any compensation. Expropriation of land without compensation is incompatible with a growing, flourishing economy. You can have one or the other, but you can't have both. In fact, this is what our neighbors in Zimbabwe started to, pu to pursue to such disastrous effect in the past. Mr. President, this is another tough choice you have to make. And as the president may well know from his time in the previous government, nothing threatens our public finances more than badly run state-owned enterprises. The greatest applause during his speech on Friday night was when he promised to end CADA deployment on the boards of SOEs and committed to appointing competent, experienced people. I want to applaud you again for that commitment. While this is great progress, Mr. President, it's not enough to fix our SOEs. Boards don't always shield you from corruption, as we've seen in some of the private sector corruption that has taken place. The governing party has been dogmatically committed to state retaining control over SOEs, no matter what their performance is. Mopatama President, isn't it time now that we ought to be willing to part ways with SAE? It should be broken up, and, and, and in fact, this has been done all over the world. We must end the ESCOM monopoly on the generation of power and boldly embrace independent power producers and renewable energy sources. Last week, 
we lost a dear friend, a fellow opposition leader, a prime minister, an activist, a husband, and a father. Ndate Morgan Swangarai. We mourn his passing, and I personally will miss him dearly. He offered wide, wise counsel and support to me, and I regret with all that happened last week, I was not able to speak to him one last time. Morgan was beaten nearly to death many times for his political activism, and he never once wavered for his commitment to fight. I can recall Morgan's word on the night of the rigged 2002 Zimbabwe elections, when he said, what the people of Zimbabwe now deserve is a celebration, but the forces of darkness may yet try to block your path from victory. As I address you, it is said that the regime still is intent on defying your will. Whatever may happen, I, as your loyal servant, am, you, am with you all the way. This may, they may want to arrest me and worst kill me, but they will never destroy the spirit of the people to reclaim their power. Here in South Africa, we deserve our own celebration. But our joy was tempered with the knowledge that the broken system still remains. Our joy is now to fix what is broken, to uplift the spirit of our country. This will require soul searching from all of us, but especially from those on the ANC's benches. Mr. Zuma did not rise to power and stay in power by himself. He was aided and abetted by many of you on that side. And so the question is, under President Ramaphosa, can the ANC reform itself? Only time will tell. Mr. Ramaphosa, you are not just the president of a particular party. You are our president, and I'm proud to call you that. We will support you when you do what is right and when you make tough choices to require to improve our people's lives. But when you make mistakes, as surely you will, we will fulfill our patriotic duty. We will continue to govern to the best of our ability where we are in power and offer South Africans an alternative. Our fight will always be for those who are left out and unemployed. May we enter a new era of mutual robust detest and show loyalty to the people of this beautiful country. On a point of order. I thank you very much. The Honorable...